Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lee Fuge, and in this video today, we're going to be taking this Squire Bullet Stratocaster, which is worth £150, and modding it by changing everything. So when it comes to affordable guitars, there's a lot of really cool guitars on the market, and this is one of them. This guitar, like I said, is valued at about £150. It's actually limited edition in this colour, and I don't believe this colour is available anymore, but I actually shot a video on this about six months ago when this was new, and it is a great guitar. There's a couple of little things which you sort of expect to not be perfect in this price point. The frets are a little bit sharp and a little bit gritty. The pickups aren't the best. The electronics aren't the best. And the tuners are okay. So one question a lot of people always have when it comes to buying cheap guitars is if the wood is good, can you put new parts on there, upgrade everything, and end up with a great guitar? And is that worth doing? So in this video, I'm gonna find out. This is a really cool guitar, like I said, I do like it, but there's a couple of little things which aren't perfect, but I do think this has a lot of potential. So I'm gonna be completely stripping this down in this video, and the only thing that's gonna remain by the end of this video from the original guitar is gonna be the body, the neck, and the bridge. And the only reason the bridge is staying is because this is a bullet, it's slightly thinner, and basically I couldn't find a bridge with a suitable trem block. They would all be too big. So everything else is going. We're stripping this completely down and rebuilding it. So all the parts that are gonna go on this are things that I've bought myself. Nothing in this video is sponsored in any way. I'm gonna be using some Ernie Ball tools, which the guys at Ernie Ball did send me recently, but they're not sponsoring this video. Everything has come from my own pocket for this. So what am I putting on? So I'm gonna put on a set of these Fender pickups. I honestly have no idea what these are. Uh, I bought them on eBay. The guy told me they came from an American Strat, so it could be anything. But I'm hopeful. I paid about £50 for these, so they should be pretty good. I'm also redoing everything else on the guitar, so I've got, noisily, all new electrical components. So there's a new switch in there, there's new pots, capacitors, everything. I've also bought everything else I need. So I'm going to be, let me just tip everything out on the desk, we're going to be shielding the cavity, putting on new locking tuners, uh, I've also got new springs for the back, new string trees, I'm going to be putting a new nut on, everything is going. So the first thing I need to do is strip the guitar down. Now I was going to do an AB comparison, uh, but basically I've broken a string when I was playing this a few days ago, so it doesn't make sense for me to restring it just to show you how it sounds in this current state. So if you want to hear how it sounds, go check out the video which is going to be linked in, I think, this top corner right now. Uh, you can hear how this sounds completely stock, and then at the end of this video, I'll show you how it sounds modded. So let's break it down. So I'm going to take off the strings first using the Ernie Ball peg winder. This is, is a really cool little tool. Okay, so strings are now off. So like I said, I am completely stripping this down. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is change the nut. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is just because. There's not really a huge benefit to this because the nut on this is actually not too bad. It's pretty decent, but I bought another nut, so I think let's just get this thing out. So if this one is glued in, which it is, there's a very simple way you can get this out. So you need a screwdriver with a flat head. So I'm gonna use this side. So a good flat head screwdriver, and you wanna put it by the nut and tap it out with a hammer. Now I don't have a hammer, so I'm gonna use a pair of pliers. So a lot of the times on cheap guitars, the nuts are often made out of plastic and that has literally crumbled as I was pulling it out. So let's just get the rest of that out now that it's started to loosen a little bit. And it is literally crumbling as I'm pulling at it. Right, that was actually much harder work than I anticipated. That was really in there and it's almost like it was made from 
clay or something, it just would not come out. So I'm just going to clean the slot now, make sure all of the residual of the plastic is out. There's still a little bit in there that needs to come away. So that actually took me a little bit longer than I thought because basically the nut on this guitar that came with the guitar is actually quite a soft plastic and it was really glued in there well. So I did have to spend a bit of time scraping the slot with uh, a good sharp knife to get all the residue out. So now I'm going to install the new nut. So whenever you're installing a new nut on the guitar, first thing you need to do is make sure it fits. Now I know this fits because I bought the right one. So whenever you're looking for a nut, measure the distance from the sides of the fretboard and also the string spacing. So that's in there, that's a good flush fit. So now I'm just gonna put some super glue in there. What you can do if you wanna be super careful is actually use some electrical tape or duct tape or any other type of tape you want. And what I'm gonna do here is just tape off the edge of the fretboard and also the edge of the headstock. Reason being, so I don't get super glue there. So all I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of super glue and just pop it in here. You don't need a ton. I normally just put a few little blobs, or in this case, I'll just drag a strip because this is quite rubbery super glue. So make sure that's in the slot in there. And then, we simply get the nut. Now again, this is where things could go wrong. You don't want to super glue it in place with the edges overhanging, so you do have to work pretty quick. Get that in place. And then we just leave that to set. So I'm actually just going to put this Ernie Ball cap on there as well, just to add a little bit of downward pressure, just to make sure that stays where it needs to stay. Just quickly check those edges are okay. They are fine. So while the glue is setting up there, I'm just gonna start taking everything else apart. So everything is coming off this guitar, even the scratch plate. So I'm just gonna lift all the pot controls off. I don't need to be too precious here because I'm literally taking everything away. Because I'm changing the scratch plate, putting all new electronics in and new pickups, I don't actually need to disassemble the scratch plate. All I need to do is unsolder the earth connection. So I just need to flip this over and find where my earth wire goes to. So the earth wire is this black cable here that comes out of the guitar. Now interestingly on this guitar, there's actually an earthing point here as well. So usually it's earthed in the back to the trem claw, but this guitar actually has a little additional earth point there. I'm going to be shielding this cavity as well with copper tape. This is really useful for preventing any sort of electromagnetic and radio interference. But it's nice to see this is actually road for humbuckers as well, so that could be another useful mod in the future. But I'm also going to remember that that's there because again, another earthing point is always good. So I just need to desolder this black cable here. And we're away. This should now, oh, of course, it's not going to lift up fully because the input jack is also still soldered to the guitar. So let's just desolder that, even though I will be changing the jack as well. But there's the old scratch plate, so that can just go to one side. So that is earthed to the jack as well. So let me just separate those quickly. Okay, great. So as I said, the bridge is going to be staying. I'm going to be changing the jack as well. I'm also going to be changing the tuners. So I'm going to be fitting these locking tuners. All of the hardware and the electrical components are from the guys at Axe Tech. There's going to be a link for their website down below in the description. They make some really cool, affordable upgrade parts for any guitars. They specify on the side whether it's import spec or American spec as well. So I bought a couple of their locking tuners to go on this thing. I don't know at this point if I'm going to be using the trem or whether I'm just going to bolt it down. Probably for this video I'll just bolt it down and then we'll decide at a later date what we're going to do with it. So the lock and tuners are going to be very easy to install, so I just need to take all of these off.
And I'm even gonna take off the string trees because why not? I bought new string trees for this because I thought if I'm upgrading pretty much everything on the guitar, I might as well upgrade the string trees as well. Not that that makes the biggest difference to the overall thing, but you know, while we're doing it, we might as well go all in. Okay, so these Locky Tuners, they're all individually packed, which is not the most useful feature. It would just be a bit easier if they all came bundled together, because at least I would know where I am then. And I've got all the parts I need here. So I actually have to do some drilling. I was hoping to not have to drill on this guitar, because things tend to go wrong when I bust the drill out. But if we've got to do it, we've got to do it. So I'm just going to install all of the lock and tuners and then I'm going to drill the pilot holes in the back of the headstock for the screws that hold them in place. The reason for this is the tuners that Squire use actually have these little dimples which actually hold the guitar in place. So if I just hold up the headstock to the camera, you'll see that next to each of the, the sort of tuner holes there are two little holes and these are the holes that those little dimples grab. So the locking tuners don't have that, so they actually have to be drilled onto the guitar. So I'm just going to quickly fit these by putting the washers on and tightening them, and then we'll flip it over and drill some holes. All right, so it's time to drill some holes in the headstock, but first of all, I'm just going to mark up where I want these to go. So I'm just going to align them by sight. So they all look about level. I think that's level enough. So I'm just gonna mark through each of the screw points where I want to drill. So once you've marked up, you need to make sure you're not gonna drill too far. So whenever you've got your drill bit ready, take your screw. Now these are obviously very small screws, so this is gonna be quite hard to see on camera hold them so the tip of the drill is against the tip of the screw. Now I always like the tip of the screw to have a little bit of extra play just to stick into the wood, so I'll maybe move that up, maybe a millimeter or a millimeter, or half a millimeter even I should say, and I'm looking on the drill bit where that equates to. So what I'm gonna do is take some electrical tape and I'm just gonna wrap that around that point. Now the reason I'm doing that is I've now got a marker so I know I should not drill down past that white point, which you're not really seeing because my camera's not autofocusing. So I'm just gonna do that now for all of the tuners. Okay, holes drilled. So now we just need to put the screws in. So those little holes are gonna act as my guide holes. So they're not too deep, there's just enough left over so that the screw's got something to catch onto. And this ultimately now is gonna hold my tuning pegs nice and steady on the headstock. I like to have a little bit of resistance there on the last few turns just so I know that that screw is really catching because the last thing you want is your tuning pegs to start twisting and sort of moving when you're trying to tune your guitar up. Okay, so they're all good except for the one on the B string. That's actually a little bit loose. So I'm gonna take that screw out again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an old guitar trick. Actually, that's because the screw is snapped. That's actually not because the hole was wrong the screw has actually snapped. So I need to make sure I have another screw. I was gonna show you guys a little trick with a matchstick you could use if you ever have a screw that uh, that goes bad, but it turns out I don't need it for this time because actually what's happened here is the screw has just snapped into the headstock. So actually I don't know how I'm gonna get that out. All right, so I just tried to drill that out. I'm not getting much luck. So if anyone has any good tips on how to get a broken screw out of a headstock, throw them in the comments below. But for now, I'm just gonna tighten this uh, bolt and washer on the front and hope that does the trick. Let's hope it holds tune. So just tighten the rest of these up now and then we can move on to the next job. The next thing I wanna do while the glue is still setting is sort out the frets. So a common thing that happens with a lot of cheap guitars is they're either gonna have sharp fret edges along the edges there 
all the tops of the frets are going to be a little bit rough and maybe not finished correctly. Now this guitar actually suffers from both of these things. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of light fret work here as well. So I'm going to be using some sanding stones. I just want to find which one is the finest one. And what I'm going to be doing, probably this one, I'm going to be taking one of these sanding stones and I'm just going along the edge of the frets here to basically shave off any rough edges. Now, if you're doing fret work yourself, obviously take your time. Frets are a very sensitive part of the guitar, so obviously don't do anything you're uncomfortable with doing. Take it to a luthier if there's something you're not sure of. So I just want to do this until the edges are not sharp anymore. Sometimes they leave this little overhang. If you have any sharp corners on the fret, you can just kind of round them off with this kind of motion as well. Just be careful not to scratch the top of the fret. Always work in small little movements when you're doing frets. You don't want to do anything too extreme because obviously you can't really undo anything. Sometimes if you've only got a few little sort of overhangs and sharp points, you don't really need to do a ton of this. Like I'm moving quite quick here because there's not a huge amount I need to do. Just enough to get each fret feeling nice. I often find on more sort of entry level and cheaper guitars, the fretwork gets worse the higher you go as well. So up here, I have way more sharp edges than I do down here. So I'm going to be spending a little bit more time making some corrections up at the higher end. Okay, that will do for now. Now we need to get that sort of gritty feeling off the top of the frets by cleaning them. So I'm going to be using, wherever I've put it, some steel wool. It's down there on the floor. Now this is really, uh, really good to do when you're not having any electronics in the guitar because this stuff is steel. So when the filings of the stick to your pickups, it is a nightmare to get out. So I'm going to be using these little fret protectors. They're just going to go over the fret like that as I clean. So to use this stuff, just take a little bit in your hand, scrunch it up into a ball, and simply rub the fret. This will just polish off any sort of excess grit or grime that's on top of the fret. So that fret's actually a lot shinier now than the frets either side of it, or from there on, I should say, not either side of it. Obviously, you're probably not gonna see too much of that in the camera, but they are a lot shinier just after a quick polish and they feel smoother to the touch as well. Now for the new string trees. These are almost a pointless upgrade, but I thought, you know what? If I'm upgrading everything on the guitar, I might as well do the string trees as well, because why not? Those frets actually look really good now as well. They look really clear, really bright. My only hope now, or my only fear I should say with this guitar, is that that uh, B string tuner is not gonna hold. So like I said, if anyone has any good tips on how to get a snapped screw out of a headstock, I would really like to hear that, because it would be a shame for all this work to be for nothing. My aim with this guitar is actually to turn it into a real good workable guitar. Now it plays great anyway, if you sort of ignore the sharp edges and the gritty feel on the frets, it's actually not a bad guitar considering the price point. So that's why I think there's a lot of potential in this and I think it could be a great guitar with a little bit of work. Is this sort of thing worth doing? That is completely down to you. If you buy a guitar and you really like the feel of it or the way it sort of is, then this kind of process is absolutely worth doing. If you buy it and you're not too sure, then obviously don't waste your money. But like I said, I like this guitar, so I think there's a lot of potential in what it can do.